Mr. Luca. Yes. You made it. Thanks for coming in. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure to have you here. So before we talk about, well, really anything, can you fill us in on your background? Just quickly, kind of, where'd you come from? How'd you get here and uh, how long you been around and all that stuff? Well, my, my father is from Austria and my mother is from France and they came to Costa Rica 38 years ago. And we came to the south uh, to live in a farm in the countryside. On the Pacific side? Or? On the Pacific side. Okay. Very near from Dominical. All right. But a bit more into the mountains. Where's San Cedro? Yes. And so I did the school and the university in Costa Rica. And then I got my first my first job of, of, of architecture in Nosara. Really? Yes, and since and that was 15 years ago, and since that I I stayed here. So. Wow! What was the project, if you can say, 15 years the, ago? The the if if you know the the boxer uh, Brenda. Oh sure, yeah, of course. That was uh, behind his his boxing ring. Mm-hmm. Uh, a good friend of of mine, Ganja. Maybe you mm-hmm. you also course, know sure, her. Sure, sure. She she built there a store. That was her first store. Wow! And I I did that project for her. I didn't know that. Yes. So that was it. So fifteen years ago. Yes. More or less. Wow! What a trip. So what was your next one? After that. Yep. Do you remember? After that, we did a a, a house that is in Las Huacas. It's called Usure House. It's a combination of a, we did a central, a central open area with a grass roof. Ah, okay. That, that was one. And then we did another one that is a very organic project in the Blue Spirit project. At that time, it was called Alma Verde. Mm. One, one of the lots there. It must have been one of the first homes in there. Yes, yes. Wow. So that, that's interesting. So and you've been in Nosara for 15 years? Yes. And it was that first project that brought you out? Yes. <laughs> Did you already know about Nosara? Had you already been no, here? No, or no, you no. just got here and you saw it? Before, before that, I was, I was here one, one time. One time in, I think in 2000 or 2001. So uh, just, friend. just, yes, yes, visiting, visiting with, with some friends that she was living here. It was a, uh, see, and, and that, that was, uh, I was just one or two times here before that. Wow. It was a very remote place for me. What was the first thing you noticed about Nosara? Like, what's the first thing that grabbed your attention? I think it was the, the nature, <laughs> the, um, the open spaces and the green and the beach, um, with no construction, like a free beach. And I think that was the most. And it was like, for me, the first impression was uh, going into a labyrinth because the roads, <laughs> it, it, everywhere that that you were going, it was like a labyrinth in between the forest. And then uh, you came out to, to very nice spots on the beach that, and, and yeah. at that time that was, nobody was at the beach. Sometimes you find this all, also here, uh, still it's, yeah, for true. example, in some parts of Playa Pelada, in some of this, you come out and, and it's really nobody is there. I think you're right. Um, there's still a couple getaway spots mm-hmm. where you can go where very few people are. Mm-hmm. And then it's also, and then it's also not bad to meet people. Mm. Not that I, I have to. So I think Nosara has that combination. You have some, some parts that you feel like, like by yourself there, mm. but then it's also nice to go, to go to the beach and, and meet the people there and, 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 and to talk and see each other. And, and, and the kids also, they, they, they find their friends there. And, mm-hmm. and, and that's also very nice. On a personal note, you and Evangelina are doing fantastic with your business. So Agnac, did I say that right? Yes, yes. I just say you. Luca. So Salagnac, maybe tell us the story. Where does Salagnac come from? What's that? What does that even mean? Pardon my ignorance. Salagnac is the last name of my mother. Okay. All right. So that's a, that's a good name. Yes. You're honoring your mom. Yes. You guys have been doing fantastic, especially over the past 10 years. I think you certainly have the majority of the new builds in the area and you consistently earn uh, bids over and over. And I know for a fact, it's not because you're the cheapest. And I also know that you're not super aggressive and you're not, I've never one time heard you say something negative about other architects. 
I've every time I've heard you talking about your product, you just say, hey, this is where we're coming from. This is our vision. And there's been no pressure. I've never seen you one time even ask to be the architect. I just see you kind of present what you do. And a lot of people gravitate to you. So whatever you're doing seems to be working. The positive thing of the work that we do is that that we started our company being two. Mm. And that and that makes a, a big difference because we are always we are always looking what the other is doing and we are very critic between us. Do you guys fight a lot? Oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks we, for your honesty. We 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 fight on a good on a good way, of course. You're like I want the door this way. Uh, then you debate it through and then she wins. <laughs> yes, I don't have I don't have a, a problem she winning. So that's Of course, oh, of course not because it's working. <laughs> yes. So let her win yes. all she wants. Yes, yes. So I think I think uh, part of it is that we are we are two and that we are very critic uh, one one to the other with a lot of respect also. And and you know, we also have been working hard. You cannot have success if you don't work hard. From the beginning, when we were single, we were working at 10, 11 at night and just Evangelina and I beside. And we started here from zero. That we started in this, in this town. And that, that gives us a lot of experience because when you start from scratch, you go through the process of everything through the more simple things to then you go into the more com complexity, mm -hmm. but, but, but you go stage by, by stage and you know about all those stages and that gives the experience and experience. It's, it's for all the process. The experience has, has a, a big value. So you attribute your success now to the hard work of those early years is, is what I'm hearing. Mm -hmm. And, and, and be, because of that experience and, and being locals, that's very important. Being locals, we know the climate very well. We know the, we know the, 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 the people, what the market ask here. And, and, you know, that gives us a lot of experience to, to develop and to go farther with, with our, with our design. What are some of your favorite projects that come to mind that give you a great deal of pride? We did a, we did a project, um, in 2008 in, in the Blue Spirit area that it's an organic, an organic, uh, project. It's mm -hmm. called New Path. That was very challenging because it was without straight corners. Mm -hmm. And that was very interesting. It's a, has a lot of, uh, it's very fluent. Uh, and, and that, that was one of our favorite projects on that time. Then we did also a very simple project for ourselves in our farm in the south and where we combined all the, elements that we have been working it's a very simple house but it has all those bioclimatic elements and and that that we like a lot and then you know we have we have many projects from the last projects uh, one very interesting is the guanacaste house mm, Castle guanacaste. i just saw the pictures on your website i wasn't associated with that one but that's a that looks beautiful Mm -hmm. And that is that is becoming a bit the elements that we have been developing during, during the last years about the openness of the houses, mm -hmm. the the integration of the interior to the exterior to lose that barrier. So when you are inside, you feel you are in a in a terrace or when you go to the to the terrace, you don't feel that transition. So it's a complete blend. Um, mm -hmm. without like the designated lines. Yes. Yes. And, and we focus our projects a lot on the, on the exterior social areas and how that is related also with part of the interior, the entertainment room. Because here for this market, it's, it's more a market of, of tourists that are on vacation, that are enjoying, they, they do party and, and they meet with other people. So, and, and the entertainment is outside. 
They want to be outside around the pool, the, the terrace, uh, but close to the kitchen, to the living area. So we are focusing our projects. If you see our mm-hmm. projects, that relation, that relation is very strong. You finished one not too long ago uh, via Infinity View. That is also, that has been also very success. We had very good comments on, on that project and it was a bit challenging on the, on the topography, very, very steep land and, and the project a bit big for the, for the, um, for the plot where we were building, but at the end it became great. I think that topography and the way you worked Um, with it actually is part of what makes the house have its appeal. See, and the, and the client was very happy because that increases the value of the property Mm -hmm. a lot because before when the property was just empty, it was actually not an expensive uh, lot. It was on a good. It was on a I good know, price. I know. I sold it, and I it really was on a good oh, price. Boy, that was a great one. And I think a lot of people would say now, "Wow, that was like a, a great lot because the view it's amazing." Do you know how that one came about? Was after he had success down in Guiones with a house we built it, rental house, all that good stuff. It was well. You know what? I guess this no sorry things for real, like it became alive. So my suggestion was, all right, let's go up the hill because then you'll have a Guiones house down mm-hmm. by the beach and then you can have one up the hill, run them out and stay at whichever one's open. Mm-hmm. And it seems so simple, but that's exactly what happened. My biggest attraction to that lot initially was that it faces north mm-hmm. and the view's so strong, but it's not quite as hot as when it points straight to the south. Mm-hmm. So when you sit there in the middle of the day, a lot of the houses at the top of the hill are scalding hot, especially the older homes mm-hmm. that are just all concrete yes. and they don't have enough of a, they haven't factored in the sun pattern, which mm-hmm. of course you guys do that now. Mm-hmm. I, I guess on that note, our architectural standards have skyrocketed over the past 10 years. Cause if you look at a home from 10, 15 years ago, and then you look at a home today, it's completely different. Um, as far as quality and design, what do you attribute that to? Before the, the old houses, I think there was not really like real architects involved in most of the houses and they were not, they were not considering all the, you know, all the, the climate, the sun position, the wind, the topography and all those elements. It was more like a focus, a focus point and, and then they were building very massive and, and with divisions, a lot of, of, mm-hmm. of divisions inside and, and the concrete. Just throw concrete at it. Yes. That, that and then, seemed to be the yes. old way of doing it. Just throw concrete. Yes. At it. Yes. And, and then we just, we just came with, with new, with new concept. We like a lot the tropical architectures, of course, because we are on a tropical land, but we also like the contemporary things. So we were st- starting with that concept from the, from the beginning to do lighter structures, more open, good ventilation. Mm. Uh, part of it always dealing with not having air condition in the social areas to be able to have the spaces more open. And, and so we, and, and, and also part of, of what we believe is that we have to improve and we have to go a bit farther. Now that, that makes a lot of sense. And we have been going farther, like step by step. We have been also farther, going farther, learning from each project and then improving in some others. That's why if you see Casa Guanacaste, Mm -hmm. it has those elements and 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 more organized and more pure so i think it's we are we are coming to that point where we are putting like all our elements together to one well you seem it seems like it's luck it's a very lucky timing for you guys as well in addition to your hard work Mm -hmm. but you now have a confluence of uh a more higher end buyer a more educated buyer someone who cares more about design and style compared to years in the past. And it seems like you just, you're kind of in the right place at the right time. Yes, so you have people right. who appreciate what you're mm-hmm. trying to offer. So for you, you get to improve little by little each house, each house. So I think one of your first game changers that I I can think about is probably Chantapura. Mm-hmm. Chantapura, like yeah, that, that's that's a great house. And I really like I really like the owners. I've gotten to know them. And they kind of they had two families, two big families. Mm-hmm. So they were trying to figure out how do we have it so that we all can be here at the same time and mm-hmm. still enjoy it. Whereas most homes, 
well, the older homes were two bedrooms and then every now and mm-hmm. then a little three. And they put in a four bedroom with two equal master suites mm-hmm. and then did a colonial style, except with the pool in the middle of the house. Mm-hmm. Were you nervous at all putting a huge pool right in the middle of the house? Or were you extremely confident saying, I got this, no problem? See, no, all? no, 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 that was, that was not a, that was not a problem. If you have to change something, that was a nice, something to improve nicely. And Shantapura is one of the more success projects for rentals. And we had like very good comments on, on that project. Well, actually, it was ahead of its time. That's mm-hmm. also one of the reasons I'm bringing yes, it up. Because yes. when that house launched, it was at the whopping price point of four yes. or 5000 a week, which at the time was astronomical. Yes. So I remember when it launched, I was like, guys, people, this, is, this is too much. You got to yes. pull it down. And they were like, nope. When mm-hmm. Nosar is ready for Shantapura, it'll be ready. And, mm-hmm. and, and that's uh, exactly what happened. So now see? Nosar took off, higher end clients come in mm-hmm. and they appreciate Shantapura. That was the first house I saw that had ventilation patterns inside mm-hmm. of it. Mm-hmm. And they didn't do air conditioning in any of the major parts. Cause mm-hmm. when I first heard that, I was like, this is horrible. Mm-hmm. You have to put AC somewhere. And mm-hmm. I guess they did do the sliding door and they have the game room, mm-hmm. but sun pat, uh, sunline factored in. Mm -hmm. Uh, interior ventilation patterns, pool in the center, equal master suites. That kind of started this new trend, in my Mm -hmm. opinion. And that that is, that is very good. We always have, that is part of what the realtors have to, that's part of your work also to know, to know what the needs of the people that come to Nosara. And because when we start the when we start the process, we already have that background, mm. which helps a lot. Speak on this subject, mm-hmm. I don't think Almendra would have happened without Sean no. happening. No, you, you know what I mean? Because it was like yes, from this, to w- this. it came from it came from that. Yes, and then I mean Almendra, it's it's a magnificent mm-hmm. home. I mean, I'd say what's that? That's in the top five, certainly. Yes, uh, at, at, in Guiones are definitely in Guiones, maybe all of Nosora. It just kind of blended into that your Harding Del Mars and your Perry Houston Contratos, and it just kind of kept going and going and going. But I want you to tell me that story again for the Casita Corinthian Nueve, the Casa 49, because that, that's an interesting story. So that's a nice, that's a nice thing. And, and, and those are the nice things about the work that we do architecture. And that's why we also like keep, keep going. And, and, you know, it's also part of our success is because we love what we do. It's, you know, if, if you have to spend time working, you have to love what you do. And if you love it, it will, it will come good. We believe in that. So, and, and we have had like very nice experience with, with clients. Each house is one experience, one new story, a relationship. You know, it's, it's, this is the nice thing because we are not just at the office doing drawings. We go outside, we meet people, we go into very intimate and personal things with, with some of the clients and, 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 you know, it's a, it's a nice part. An architect is not just a draftman. It's, it's also, we have to use a bit of psychology. We have to be a bit of engineers. We have a bit of everything. And that's, that's the nice thing. We are always with, with new things because we are always dealing with new clients. And one of the stories is this Casita 49. If you see the name, it doesn't mean anything. It's just a, a number of probably a, a lot or a site. But Casita 49, it's Casita is, is the name of a small house. Uh, and, and, and 49 is 49. 49. And this is the story of, uh, of a guy that was surfing a lot when he was 15 or 16. He was surfing a lot in the coast of, of California. And, and when he was there looking into the ocean and, and Joe in there, he said, one day I will build my house here in, on the Pacific coast of California. And, and then he, he were, he was telling us about the story that he was working very hard for many years. He has done very success with his company, um, for many, many years. And it came to the, to the time now that he bought a property 
and in that property he put the name Casita 49 because it's 90, 49 years that he has been waiting for his dream to build <laughs> to build his house on the Pacific coast and he just said it's it's not in California it's it's but it's on the Pacific just a bit more south a little more south and he keeps enjoying surfing and and he's I think he sold his company now and he will come to live he wants to come to live permanently to Nosara and and keep surfing. That's an awesome story. The the people we get to meet in our line of work is very interesting. Like the mm. the amount of high level, educated. Sometimes people are just lucky and they make their money. Some people work their whole lives. Yes, uh, and, and it takes forty nine years to get it, but then they pull it off. But the biggest satisfaction, I'd say, for, probably from what we do is. It's just the happiness that people get from being here. Because mm -hmm. I wanted, really, I, I came here, it was, it was August 5th, 1999. And the, that morning when I woke up and I saw this place and I saw that you can talk about surfing and there were doctors and lawyers and educated people who enjoyed surfing. Where I, where I, when I was brought up, at, if you're surfing, uh, you didn't really want your boss to know that you surf because then he mm -hmm. just thinks you're a bonehead or an idiot. Mm -hmm. And in Costa Rica, it was everywhere and it was okay. Mm -hmm. It was very liberating mm -hmm. for me. It changed my life. Like it hit yes. me. I was like, I want to be there. Yes. That's where I want to be. Yes. And made it, but I needed help and it was hard. And like you, I, I started with nothing, came here completely broke, lost everything in the crash and I've had mm -hmm. to rebuild mm -hmm. transaction by transaction at a time. But the one thing that never gets old is when people, other people get here and it's like, thank you. Th this this is great. I'm happy now. My wife's mm -hmm. happy. Like mm -hmm. it's, this change this changed my life. Mm -hmm. We hear that a lot, and just like you, we enjoy that too. Mm -hmm. It's a uh, it's very yes. Satisfying. When you make people happy, it's that's that's I, very it's a very great satisfaction. For our business, we have the vacation rental side, mm -hmm. which is the most stressful, difficult thing. Mm -hmm. One of them that you could possibly do here, actually. Yes, it's and hard. the toughest part is when people who aren't from or who aren't familiar with here come down and a lizard runs across the wall mm -hmm. and they're like, Oh my gosh, how could you rent me this terrible house that has a lizard in it? And mm -hmm. that that's commonplace. Mm -hmm. Every house has mm -hmm. a lizard running across the wall. That's or in the jungle. Yes. But if somebody's traditionally going to Orlando or Disney world or Miami, Las Vegas, and then they come here, it's a culture shock. Um, so that in the vacation rental business can be a real big pain, but more often than not, even those people who at first are like, Oh my gosh, there's, there's leaves in the pool. What's wrong with those people, by the time they leave, have calmed down. They're more adjusted. They roll with the punches. They hit the bumps on the road. They're mm. like, eh. I, I like that effect that Nosara mm. has on, on not just Nosara, but, but, but especially Nosara, because we're kind of out here in the middle of nowhere, sort of. It has a calming effect. Mm -hmm. Like very intense, stressful people come here and it decompress. It's a decompression area. At the, e at the end, they take a great experience it's because, that, see, sometimes are like crazy things, but, but they're like things that at the end, it's an experience. They have, they have something to tell friends when they That's go true. back. It's a different vacation, <laughs> yes. right? Yes. Yes. It, it really is. So, yes. you know what a good one you did? We, we've been talking about these big, really, really nice one. Nice homes. Um, Castle Colorado has a unique design and it's not a big home at all. It's not no. even right by the beach, but. People ask for it a lot because they like the design, the layout, the look and feel. You know, I, th I think uh, one of the biggest challenges in architecture is to do simple things with low budgets. As You know, that's that's mm. that's always because you can have a huge budget and you do these massive big houses and they are like very impressive or luxury and this. But to go to the simple, to the simple things, it's sometimes the most difficult mm. because you have to do the right thing, just the right thing. You don't have like where to escape. You have to do the right thing. And in some of those projects, if everything, all the elements and everything gets accommodated well, it's the right thing. And, and that's the success of the project. Now, will you that's, still um, take on some of the smaller projects or do you need to? get to a certain point or are you still open to doing another Colorado? Yes, of course. Okay. So, well, that's interesting because we, be, I talked with Andrew mm -hmm. uh, from Nostar Design and Build. He, uh, Andrew, uh, uh, mm -hmm. Andrew Saxton, for anybody who doesn't know, he's my preferred project manager and you and he work together very well, but Andrew's explained it to me that the business, there's so much demand now in Nostar 
that is hard to get mm-hmm. to every project you want to take. Sometimes you have to, sometimes you have to pass and choose on this or that. So that's why I was asking. I I, I don't I don't like to, of course I don't like to say no to to someone or so, but sometimes it's we don't say no because of the if the project is too small but some what we prefer is to have projects that that are a challenge for us of mm-hmm. course if it is if it is something that is a challenge for us and and that someone that wants to incorporate our elements and the concept that we work we don't don't care about the size really what's your ideal client Our ideal client is because if it's too challenging, then life's hard enough down here as it is. No, it's just you know a client that 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 you doesn't have to be like the people don't come with with crazy with crazy things. It's very rare that someone comes with something that is like very very crazy out of something that is normal. It's our ideal client is someone that has an idea of what he wants but that also sees in our work an opportunity to improve of what they what they want to do I guess because you. they cannot do it of course that's why they need us so but they they need to give us their what they want but they have to give us some freedom for us to develop that So a nice mixture of input and guidance at the beginning as to what they want mm-hmm. and then let you come in and they have to your- they have to like what they see of what we have done that is the ideal client so that we keep on that same concept yeah, that makes sense mm-hmm. that makes sense now or if it is something completely different that we have never done it but it's something interesting we will be open also so uh, the word the word interesting keeps coming up like that's That you're mm-hmm. fortunately at a place to where you can work with people and projects that interest you. That's ideal. I, mm-hmm. I think every everybody wishes and their, for their job, they could do something they were interested in. Mm-hmm. And I don't think very many people actually do get to do a job every day that they're truly interested in. Most yes. people just go to their job to make their money yes. and then leave. Mm-hmm. And, and you're, you're getting to do just mm-hmm. the opposite. You're plunging deeper mm-hmm. into your work and you're saying your life partner, your wife mm-hmm. supports it and does it too. Mm-hmm. But of course, you know, on that, we also have very clear that, that we, do, we will never put our ego before a client mm-hmm. wish. That's also very important because we we are very we are very sure the project is not for us it's for the client. So, so. if they want the rocks over here and not over here you're not yes. going to get mad and yell and throw we your can, hands up you'll say we okay. cannot we cannot do that. Mm-hmm. That is yes. What's good feedback people would be interested to know that. Is there anything you'd like to get out there for people who might be listening or watching this coming to Nosara over the next year or two, maybe they already own some land or they're thinking about it. Um, any message for them? How would people, how would people get started on a potential project with you? The first thing when they get the, um, the property, we will be very open and happy to have a, if they want our opinion, a first opinion of all the pros and contras of the property that they have, we will be very happy to do a site visit that is that is very good that's like the first step to know what are the opportunities for that for for that property and and then and then if they are interested of working with us it's it's good that they look a bit into our work if they can speak with some of our clients or if they speak to you about your experience with us so that they get a bit of information from us And then, and, and then with that, we will be happy to, to support them during the whole process. Mm, so like if someone were to come through me the way I do it, I try to be very fair because I'm mm-hmm. friends with, well, I try to be friends with everyone or everyone mm-hmm. it can be. Yes. Um, I'm friends with, with your competition. I'm friends with you and yes, sure. our kids have been growing up and doing ballet together for years. So for me, yes. no, sorry, it's such a small town. Yes. I don't want anyone to be angry, but at the same time, not everyone can get the job every time. Mm-hmm. So here's how I do it. And I just say, that one's Lucas, that one's this, that one's that. And then it speaks for itself. Mm-hmm. And then whatever they gravitate towards to, they gravitate. Um, 
I try to introduce them to Andrew, if nothing else, for a free consultation. Mm -hmm. And the, the reality is people don't need a project manager down here if they have the right architect and the right builder combo who are honest and they all work together. However, a lot of people, when they come down, they'd never buy a piece of dirt in the first place if they didn't have a project manager. Mm. So the project manager, it's, um, it's hiring a project manager. And this is the point I try to explain. It's not an insult to an architect in mm. any means. Mm. It's helping the client become comfortable with building in a foreign country mm. and someone who already knows the architect and somebody who already knows all these things. So I stand by Andrew in particular. There's other project managers, but he's my favorite because, well, I've known him a long time and we have a lot of history and every single build, and I can say this, every single build at some point came back and said, you know what, that was a pretty good idea. And Andrew, much like yourself, I've seen him do the right thing mm -hmm. when he didn't have to so many times. So that's that's why I, mm -hmm. I he has my trust and we have a good relationship. But he's the one who educated me on the strengths of you. So mm -hmm. I just kind of relayed those um. To the clients of, okay, here's Luca. When you go meet him, he's not going to crack a joke. He's, you know, you're not going to buddy up and it's, it's not like that. You're just very like, hey, this is what we do. Take a look. I'll go look at the site with you. Uh, and you're very kind of, you're, you're very calm. Mm -hmm. The first couple of years of knowing you, like we weren't super close. I just knew of Luca. You know of me. I, I just was like, boy, Luca doesn't like to laugh. Luca doesn't, he doesn't like to have any fun. And that could not be further from the truth. And I'm from the South where mm -hmm. everyone's like, hey, like Rosie, mm -hmm. one of your houses. Hey, honey. Hey, y'all. Uh, that's kind of my background. So anyway, we're standing there. I can't remember where we were. We were somewhere on a hill. And I was like, I wonder what the view's like. And you're like, oh, I don't know. We'll check. And then you just shot up a tree. <laughs> <laughs> I was shocked, man. I couldn't believe it because you've always been so like, so... For me, you were like a very rigid mm -hmm. figure. And then you're like, I don't know. Let's go see. Boom. And you took straight up the tree. Have you always been like that? I have climbed a few trees when it's, <laughs> when it's, when it's necessary. I do it. <laughs> you are an amazing tree climber. It's easy. I grew up in a farm. All right. Did you when have to I harvest was, the peepas from the trees or something? And you got kind I, of going we, up we and down? We were playing in the trees to climb who climbs higher and following one each other and those kind of things hey, uh, well i think all kids play in trees but most <laughs> of us like have branches and we mm. go from like one to yes the exactly tree. yes you just run straight up tree. oh yes yeah you're selling yourself short it's amazing <laughs> mm. no it, it turns out actually you're hilarious and i love your dry sense of humor and one of the funniest things or most interesting thing about you that probably no one knows is like when you have a day off you're like most people go like somewhere and just hang out and chill for a minute. Like you like go, you like walk from here to Samra and back or up a mountain or, or mm. something like what did that come from you being on a farm and covering Greek distances? Because you truly go along. If you go on a hike, you go on a hike. If you go on a bike ride, like you, why do you gotta go so far, Luca? Why can't you just hang out around here? I That's my personality of of always looking what is around the corner, what is around the corner. It's, it's I, it, I don't know how to call it. It's just curiosity or challenge also. I, challenge I to see, like the challenge, challenge to see, to see what is, back. yes, yes. And, mm -hmm. and also just that I can, I, I, I can get to there. It's and kind of similar to your architecture story and constant improvement. Yes. Yes. And with your own personal, even yes. when you're just having fun, you still are a driven man. Well, hey, thank you for coming in. Thank you. That, well, this was this was great. Man, you guys are doing such a great job, and people are really enjoying your product. And mm. thank you for being here in the community, not just for your professional services, but everything you guys do in the community. And that's one cool thing about living here. A lot of people truly do a lot behind the scenes that no one knows about. Mm -hmm. And you're one of those people, and you never ask for any credit. And... Hopefully someone seeing this learns about you and I hope I hope it benefits you. This is great. Thank you very much. Yeah, my pleasure. I enjoy it. I enjoy it a lot <laughs> because I have yes, we have a lot. I think everybody here has a lot to tell. I think so too. And it's important that I also some people that I I see just around, I don't know anything about them and I'm learning also from you. 
And we have been doing great also with all your support. We appreciate it a lot. Mm. Oh, uh, we have a very good relation with Andrew, which is the one we work close, closer. He has done a great work. We have never like going into like bad controversies. It's always a very good communication relation. And we appreciate a lot because that is also, as I said, we get a lot of background from you, what you what you tell people from us, it's a good background and help us also to to move forward with some of them. And hey, I appreciate a, that a, a lot. It's a pleasure. Thank mm -hmm. you for the opportunity. Thanks, Luca. Thank you.